Hello and welcome to Aragon Web and our series called Take Aim. I've needed to address this question for a long time. Because it's a lengthy topic, I'm going to break it up into two parts. Today we're going to look at the classroom part and we'll save the practical application for next month. I'm referring to scope height and how it affects your point of impact at various ranges. Also, we'll be looking at how a mill dot scope can help address this and be an invaluable tool for an air gunner. You can get links and more information about this episode on my site, www.airgunweb.com. Just look for the Take Aim section of the site. So let's go ahead and get started. So now let's go ahead and just jump right in. When you're mounting a scope to your gun, ideally you're going to want that scope as close to the receiver of the gun as possible. Unfortunately, that's not always practical. Now, the higher the scope is mounted, the more dramatic the difference is at the angle of the sight line between the scope and the barrel of your gun. Take a look at the following photo. This is a typical setup. The scope is mounted sort of high because you need access to load the pellets. Now this is not to scale and I'm not an engineer, but you definitely get the idea. If I zero this setup at 20 yards, then as long as every shot I take is at 20 yards, I'm golden. But what happens when the shot is at 10 yards? Go ahead and take a look at this next image. The shot, that is the point of impact, will actually hit lower than where you're sighting your gun. This is because the sight line of the scope is different than the sight line of the bore of your gun. Now I'm sure we've all been out in the field and either shot over or shot under our intended target, and this is one of the major reasons why. Now the reverse happens as the pellet passes past that 20 yard zero point. When you go past your scope zero, the point of impact will actually be higher than your scope's line of sight. Now as gravity takes over and the pellet begins to fall back to earth, you'll find a second range at which the point of impact and the sight line of your scope meet. This will vary for each rifle depending on velocity, pellet weight, and scope height. So how do you deal with this and not just drive yourself crazy? Well, you start by making sure that you've got a good quality mill dot scope. Now this next part's important. If you have a variable powered scope, that space between the dots is going to change depending on your magnification setting. If you plot your point of impact at one setting and then change it, your data is going to be off. So you need to always use the same magnification level or create additional charge for each level of magnification. There are some software packages and even iPhone and Android apps that can do this math for you. But I found that some time at the range and a notepad to document the results is actually more practical for me. Now this is how you're going to plot out your point of impact. Again, each rifle is going to be different, so just use this for basic reference regarding the principle. We're going to use 20 yards as our scope zero for this exercise. So here are the steps. Step one, set up your targets at measured distances. Shoot three shot groups while aiming dead center. Do not adjust your aim. You're finding out where the pellet will hit at these different ranges. Step three, make a note as to which mill dot is closest to the point of impact at each range. For example, at 10 yards, you may be closest to the second mill dot below the center point of your scope. This is represented by the green dot on our scope image. Continue the above process until you're satisfied that you have good consistent point of impact data at each range. On our example, you're going to see the following. A green dot represents the impact at 10 yards, which is two dots low. A blue dot represents the impact at 20 yards, which is dead center. A red dot represents the impact at 30 yards, which is two dots high. A purple dot represents the impact at 40 yards, which is back to dead center due to pellet drop. And at 50 yards, there's a brown dot, and it impacts at three dots low. Now that you've got all this data, how do you make use of it? Well, here's how. You're going to take your mill dot scope and use your mill dots as a guide. You're going to adjust your point of aim to correspond with the mill dot you documented as being closest at the distance you're shooting. Now let's go ahead and review the following image. To hit your target at 10 yards, you're going to aim using the second dot below the center of the scope. At 20 yards, you're going to aim dead center. At 30 yards, you're going to use the second dot above the center of the scope. At 40 yards, you're going to use dead center again. And at 50 yards, you'll aim using the third dot below the center of the scope to adjust for pellet drop. 
With practice and patience, this will become second nature. Your gun and your pellet choice is going to be different than mine, so you're going to need to go to the range and apply these principles to get your own data. This is going to solve two problems for us. It solves issues caused by having a scope that's mounted high over the receiver. And second, it teaches us how to use our mill dots to adjust for pellet drop. These are great techniques and really necessary if you plan to be accurate with your air gun. Well, this wraps up another episode of Take Aim. I want to thank the folks at Pyramid Air for sponsoring our channel and for sponsoring this series. Be sure to visit my website, www.airgunweb.com, for more information about this episode. Until next time, this is Rick Utzler with airgunweb.com. Thanks again for watching.